Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to cover our first real gas law, and this one's called Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law deals with how the pressure and the volume of a gas are related. All right, now keep in mind here, we'll study Boyle's Law a few sections later. We'll study uh, Charles's Law, and then we'll study a few other laws. Eventually, we will culminate in the ideal gas law, which is kind of the grandfather that encompasses all of these guys. So for now, we're going to zero in on Boyle's Law, but just keep in mind it's kind of a, uh, a smaller uh, child law to the giant ideal gas law that we're going to get to a little bit later. So when you think of a gas, what properties um, all together, what properties do you think could totally describe a given gas? Well, a given gas is going to have some kind of pressure associated with it, so we'll call that P. Uh, some gas may also have associated with it a temperature, that's called T. And some gas, of course, is going to occupy a fixed volume, uh, volume V. And also, any gas that you can think of will have a certain amount to it, the number of, of moles in. Okay, so these are the, the important variables here that govern the behavior of all gases, all right? Now, we're not going to talk about all of them at first. In this one, we're going to be dealing with Boyle's Law, which has to do with the pressure of a gas and how it relates to the volume. But I want you to keep the big picture in mind. Any gas that you have, any gas, can be described by its pressure, its volume, its temperature, and N, which is number of moles, which is how much of the gas you have. If you know all of those things, then you know everything there is to know about that gas, uh, how much of it is, what's the pressure, what's the temperature, what's the volume. All right, so Boyle's Law in words, Boyle's Law, this is how it's typically written in the book, so I'll write it down real quick and we'll talk about it. At constant, whoops, at constant um, temperature, Boyle's Law states the following. The volume of a gas varies inversely. We'll talk about what that means in a second. With the pressure. All right, a lot of students read this and they'd say, what does this even mean? Basically what it's saying, when you see something varies inversely, it means when one property goes up, the other property goes down. It's like a seesaw, right? So one side goes up, other side goes down. If you flip it the other way, then they vary inversely with one another. If something varies directly, they both go up at the same time or they both go down at the same time, but that's not the case here. In Boyle's Law, what we're saying is the pressure and the volume, the volume and the pressure, vary inversely with one another. That means when one goes up, the other one goes down. So in terms of, of math, the way you would write that, and it says it varies inversely as. The way you would write that is you would say the volume occupied by this gas is proportional to one over the pressure. Okay, and this is another way of writing Boyle's law of chemistry uh, in terms of math. Okay, now this symbol, if you've never seen it before, it looks like a little fish. Okay, this symbol means proportional. Proportional to. All right, now. Pretend for a second this was an equal sign. Now it's not really an equal sign, but pretend for a second it was an equal sign. Then what this would mean is that if I increase the pressure higher and higher and higher, since it's on the bottom of this fraction, if I make this a big, big number, then the whole fraction is going to go down, 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 which means the volume goes down, 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 if this were an equal sign. Okay? And likewise, so if I increase the pressure, the volume goes down. Now, if I decrease the pressure, if I make this very, very small, then I'm dividing by a little bitty number, and that makes the whole fraction go up. So again, you see the, the inverse relationship, which means when the pressure goes up, volume goes down. Volume goes down, pressure goes up. Now, um, how does that make sense as far as actual, um, you know, in terms of actual practice? Well, let's say that you had a gas confined inside of a container here. Let's draw the little container something like this. And inside of here, I'm going to draw like a plate, right, which is connected to like a piston or something like this. Now, inside of here is a gas, right? And then you could say, you'll understand why I'm going to write this in just a second. Um, basically, this is large volume because this is kind of a large volume compared to the container. And because of that, it's going to give me a low pressure. Now let me ask you, what's going to happen if I change things a little bit here, and I redraw it, and I go 
from one state to the next here like this, okay? And if, what if, what's gonna happen if I go down here and I push this piston in? Okay, so here's the piston. Originally it was up here, there's gas, there's still a gas inside here. This thing cannot leak, nothing can get out. What's gonna happen if I smush on it, you know, push on it like this? Basically I'm going to compress the gas. It's gonna be very hard, it's gonna try to resist me. Just think about pushing on a balloon, right? But let's say I'm operating a machine or something and I'm really able to push it. What's gonna happen? as in this case, I have decreased the volume, what's gonna happen to the pressure inside here? Just think about pushing on a balloon. The pressure's gonna get greater because the more you compress a gas, the more it's trying to push back because of those collisions, the molecular collisions inside the gas, and so the pressure is gonna go up. So inside of here, what you have is you have a small volume, and because of that, you have a high pressure. And of course you can go the other way too. You could start with the piston compressed and you can expand it making a large volume and as you do that you're gonna get a lower pressure inside. So do you see how this is an inverse relationship? Whenever I go and make the volume smaller, the pressure goes higher. And of course if I go the other way, if I make the volume larger, that means the pressure uh, gets lower. And that exactly goes with what we wrote in terms of math here. So this is kind of the math, right? But this is sort of the everyday thinking about what's going on here. All right, so Boyle's law fundamentally is basically telling you if I increase the pressure, I decrease the volume, and vice versa. That's basically what it's saying. Now, when we talk about Boyle's law happening with this pressure-volume relationship, we're, we know that the temperature of the gas is going to matter, okay, but we're gonna say that it's constant here. So when we talk about Boyle's law, we're not even factoring in temperature. We're saying temperature's constant. Nothing has changed in terms of the temperature of the gas. If we do this experiment at constant temperature, this is what happens. Also, the other variable we said that, that uh, gases depend on in is the number of moles of the gas. We're also saying that that's constant. And that makes sense from what we've drawn here. I didn't add or subtract any gas, so I didn't change the number of moles of gas. And I definitely didn't put a candle anywhere to change the temperature of the gas. All I did was fix those two things, the number of moles and the temperature, and I just changed the volume to see what would happen. And basically, you could see the inverse relationship right there. Now, as we talked about before, this is a proportionality uh, symbol here. It's not an equal sign. If we want to try to write an equation, we need to figure out how to change that. So let's put an equal sign there over here and see how we have to alter things. So we're going to introduce a constant A. I don't know what A is. I'm going to introduce it, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second here. So we said that the volume was proportional to one over P. Now we put that proportionality symbol there because we know that as one goes up, the other one goes down, but we cannot put an equal sign exactly here because if we put an equal sign, that means if I just put the number of tors here and take one over the number of tors or one over the number of atmospheres, and I'm gonna get the volume. And it's not quite like that. The, the variation is correct, but it's not exactly equal. So in order to fix that, we're gonna put a constant of proportionality here and then we'll stick an equal sign in there. So what we're basically saying here, and these are multiplied together, A times one over P. What we're saying here, and A is a constant, the, the only variables that can change are V and P. So as P goes up, V goes down, and vice versa, but in order to put the equal sign here, we put an unknown constant A. We don't know what the constant A is, but if we were doing experiments and we wanted to figure out what Boyle's Law actually was, we'd have to put it in there as some unknown because we know that these two variables are related inversely, but we don't know exactly how they're related. So we want to try to create an equation uh, there. And we don't, we, we, we can figure out experimentally what this number is by doing a bunch of experiments. I mean, I can measure the pressure and then measure the volume and then change the pressure and measure its volume and then change the pressure again and measure the volume. I could do a bunch of experiments and I could certainly figure out what A is. But here we don't need to do that because all I'm really wanting to do here is solve. I want to move P to the other side. I'll multiply both sides by P. So here I have PV is equal to A because when I multiply both sides by P, it'll disappear from the right hand side because it'll cancel and it will remain on the left-hand side. That's just algebra. Multiplying both sides by P moves it over like that. This is extremely important. This means that P times V, the pressure times the volume of a gas, is always a constant. Okay, what does this mean? That's very, very uh, important for you to understand. That means 
that for ideal gases, which are perfect gases, in the real world, the gases aren't totally perfect. We'll talk about what perfect gases mean later. But for the purpose of discussion here, we're gonna consider all of the gases we talk about to be ideal, which means they're perfectly behaved gases. For all gases like that, if you know its pressure and you multiply it times the volume, okay, then it's always going to be a constant and it's always going to be the same number. So if I change the pressure, I'm going to get a new volume, but the product of those two things is always going to be equal to A. That comes directly from Boyle's Law, basically. You don't have to understand why that's the case. This is just experimentally shown to be true. If you didn't know anything about chemistry and you just started studying gases, basically you'd figure out that if you start squeezing gases and measuring the, re the resulting pressures, then ultimately when you take the pressure times the volume, you're always going to get the same number. Now we don't know what it is, it's some constant A that you could measure experimentally in the laboratory, but it's important for you to know that P times V is always a constant. That's another way of writing Boyle's Law, basically. Okay, so the reason that I'm writing it like this is because I want you to understand that if I move from state one to state two, okay, then, and when I say state one and state two, I'm talking about this guy here might be state number one where I have a certain volume and a certain pressure of the gas. And then state two, I've squished it, so I have a new pressure and a new volume. That's moving from state one to state two. So I'm gonna label them state one and state two. What you've learned from Boyle's Law when you write it like this is essentially P1 times V1 is equal to this constant we've talked about. Okay, but as I move to state number two, I'm gonna have a new pressure, call it P2, and a new volume, call it V2. But I know that no matter where I'm at, no matter what pressure and volume combination I have, if I multiply them together, I'm always gonna get the same constant A, whatever that constant is, okay? So that comes directly from what we talked about here. So the state number one, P times V, is equal to state number two, P times V, could be equal to another state, P times V. In other words, I can take this piston, I can move it anywhere, and I'll have a new volume, right, of gas. And I'll have a new pressure that I measure inside, but the product of those two things is always gonna be the same, no matter where the piston is. And that's just a fact. It's not something you could just think up on a Saturday afternoon and just, just know it. It's something that they experimentally found to be true a long time ago and formulated Boyle's Law from it. Okay, so this is a fact. Now, this is why we're doing this. We, notice we introduced this constant A and I rearranged it and I'm showing you how you can move from state one and state two. And I kept telling you, I really don't know what A is. And then you're probably thinking, well, why do you keep writing it on the board if you don't know what it is? It's because if I move from state one to state two to state three to state four, basically I've shown that it doesn't really matter what this is. Because this is equal to this and this is equal to this, I can then say that P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And this is another way of stating Boyle's Law. I know I've shown you several different ways to write this, but this is a useful equation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna asterisk this. In fact, this equation I showed you is, is good for the concept. Okay, awesome, glad you know that. This one's good for the concept, glad you know that. This one's good for the concept, glad you know that. This one, the one I've circled, is actually what you're going to use to solve problems. Because what it basically says is if I have a system like this where I can change the volume and measure the pressure, or if I change the pressure and measure the volume, um, if I know where I'm at in state one, and I change one of these guys, and I know where I, like for instance, maybe I increase the pressure and I wanna figure out what the resulting volume is, I can use this equation to figure that out, okay? Now of course, in this guy, it's implied that the number of moles of gas and the temperature of the gas is constant. Because if you don't see the variable there, you can assume that we made it constant. Now as far as units go, I wanna make sure you understand. You can really use any units you want in this equation for pressure, and you can use any units you want for volume, but you just have to be consistent. In other words, if you use pascals for pressure here, and then you, then you must also use pascals for pressure over here. If you use milliliters over here for volume, then you have to use milliliters for volume over here. If you end up using cubic centimeters for volume here, then you need to use cubic centimeters for volume over there. So you don't have to use a certain unit when you're using Boyle's Law like this, but you need to be consistent, okay? So ultimately what we learned is that Boyle's Law says that at constant temperature, the volume of a gas varies inversely with its pressure, which is symbolized by this relation right here. This is not an equation because this symbol is of just a proportional 
proportionality. It just says how the variables relate to one another, but you can't put an equal sign there because then I'd be able to stick the pressure in and just calculate the volume straight away, and it's not quite like that, although the variation is represented by this equation. Then we talked about this where we change one variable and then we get the other guy. We learned about the inverse relationship there. And then we said if we want to make an equation out of it, we've got to stick a constant of proportionality in there, which allows us to move the pressure over so that pressure and volume, no matter what you're doing, is always going to be multiplied together to give you the constant, the same constant. Once you get that concept there, then you can move from state one to state two, and you can just simply equate the two things. I could have just started the whole lesson over and given you this and said, here's Boyle's Law, have fun. But it's not all that you know, enlightening for you to understand that. Now you know where it comes from. Now you know that pressure and volume are, are uh, inversely related to one another. And in the next section, we're going to work several problems to show you how to use Boyle's Law, and you'll find out that it's pretty simple. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll do that now.